bug in my mouth, even with this windshield here. Oh, hey, yeah, everybody. this isn't... There's no glass here. This is 100%, like... This is just air. I can just reach right through this. Sorry, I should have told you. That's all right. Well, everybody, welcome to an on-location episode of VFX and Chill. Uh, we are out to uh, do some exciting archaeology today. Uh, that's, archaeology. That's the A -E correct built pronunciation. Right, Finally, somebody gets it right. Built right into the middle. That's how you remember how to spell that word. <laughs> But uh, welcome to VFX and Chill, the show where Seth and I take a look at trying to recreate visual effects from our favorite movies and today, video games as well. Seth, how are you doing? How's the ride? Uh, the ride's great. It's a little bumpy and I'm noticing some weird artifacts and there's like a weird thing that happens with the trees. Like, uh, we're just out of nowhere. It just kind of becomes, I feel like we're, I feel like we're going in circles to be quite honest. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, I can't tell if we're making progress or not, but uh, the field guide assured me that this is a, that we're going in the right direction. What's, what's that so, field guide you have? What's the name of the field guide? Where did you get it? Um, it is called the Audubon Field Guide to North American Birds. Hashi, that's the Cinnabon Field Guide to North American Birds. I was wondering why it was so brief and had so many mentions of frosting. And no birds. Welcome, everybody, from around the world to enjoy us driving around the world. I do I do feel like we are going in circles. What if this is all we did on the show? We just like <laughs> made really stupid jokes and drove around uh, these trails in this video game. This one. Hey, what is this from? I know this, this look. Hashi, you know this look. You're very familiar with these, this property, correct? Very familiar with this property. My favorite, uh, I, uh, big, big gamer, uh, uh, gamer of the video games, me. Uh, this is from that, uh, from the that that the the movie, the the cartography game. Uh, yes, it's all about cartography. Um, oh, map map making. Map yeah. making. Who's that? Hey, whoa! Who is oh. that? Hey, Sorry, drive up. Hi, everyone. Michael, how you doing? Michael, so crazy to see oh, you. I'm, oh, I'm great. Uh, just living out here in the bush. You know, having a having a grand old time. You live out here? Well, not even, not just out here, but on this vehicle, as my shirt says, uh, "Life rocks when you're oh, Michael, when your home rolls." Hands on the bars, man. Come on. Sorry, sorry. I know it's a safety safety third, safety third. You're not I wearing say. your helmet, but you are wearing headphones. I, I think in this country, wherever yeah, we are, that qualifies, my ears. right? Okay. Gotta keep those safe. It's my my bread and butter. It's my ears. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a helicopter. Like we can't really hear each other speak if we're not. Uh, yeah, with all these sounds of the engine Savannah. is very loud. Good thing we have <laughs> RTX sound canceling on our microphones, or y'all would just hear the noise of this motorcycle and this uh, hackneyed jeep. And Hashi screaming. He's just been screaming nonstop for the past two hours. Anyway, Uncharted hey, is the answer I, to that I, joke we were making earlier. <laughs> oh, Uncharted! Yes, we are throwing our charts out today and covering the well. We're talking about Uncharted because, one, we do love the game franchise, but also, I don't know if you guys know, but there is a, uh, there's a little a little feature film happening um, in theaters near you next week, I think. Yeah. Something like that. That sounds lovely. And, I, you know, it's starring a very good friend of ours. Um, oh, a friend, fr friend of the show, huh? Friend of the show. Well, yeah. Yes. We've had him on before and had some issues, but I think... Uh, you want to go ahead and bring him out? We were going to prepare a whole let's thing. Let's do that. Let's All go, right, let's go everybody, pick up our from guests. the upcoming Uncharted right. movie. Please welcome our friend Tom Holland. Tom, welcome Tom, to VFX welcome and Shell. Look at that logo. You got a mug. Yeah. Yeah. One of our mugs. Oh. Welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back. It's good to see you. And we did the sound check ahead of time, so don't worry, guys. We'll be able to hear Tom this time. It will Every not time be. he speaks, we'll hear everything he says. Everything he says. So, Tom, tell us, what was it like working on Uncharted. You, people think that you are somewhat young for the role. I'm curious uh, uh, what your thoughts were as you approached it. I mean, he just he just looks you, you just look young, Tom. It's not it's not that we're we're saying that you aren't like mature enough to to act in a big sure. film. You look like you could have descended from from, you know, one of the the famous explorers, uh, Sir Francis Drake. Is, is that right? Yeah, is, that's right. Hashi, you've been hey, reading some Wikipedia since we last talked. You've been reading a whole bunch of Wikipedia, haven't you? I've been watching a whole <laughs> lot of 10-minute uh, everything you need to know about Uncharted videos, and uh, I tell you, the, the 
Yeah, man. So sorry, Tom. Sorry, we got carried away. Do um, how do you feel about Mark Wahlberg's mustache uh, that it's missing? It's not in the film. He is he is extremely young. Like, can you tell? I was tell really us? surprised when you told me who he was supposed to play, Seth, because I wasn't familiar with the character. Oh you yeah, let, he plays you know, Sully. They just the, Sully, so the, o- the the older man character, like the crotchety like <laughs> mentor figure, uh, and who has gray hair and a mustache, and they're like they you know first thought. Well, Mark to be Wahlberg. fair, the age difference between Tom and Mark Wahlberg fits. You just got to shift everything. Yeah, you know. A, a, a so it, it would be like Uncharted is, is three the one that flashes back to them as as children ish. <laughs> Or something. Uh, well, four flashes back to him and his brother Sam, isn't that right, Tom? Yeah, he said like back to his bro- his brother Sam. He and Sam they have a couple flashbacks uh, in that because that's all about the two of them. Are there yeah, flashbacks? Tom's to been Sully? told to stick to the talking points. Uh, he's gotten in trouble for this before, and yeah. so I think he's being a little bit tight lipped about stuff. That's okay. But we um, actually have another special guest that we <laughs> is not a joke. We we're actually very very excited for this one. Uh, who can tell us all about uh, Mark Wahlberg's mustache? Please welcome our friend Mark Wahlberg. Mark- yeah, you know we, uh, we we made the movie uh, yeah, Uncharted. Obviously, it's beloved of uh, over 40 million uh, video games sold, mm-hmm. and the character Amazing, Sully you know is quite stat. iconic in his look with the mustache. In the beginning of the yeah, movie, yeah. I don't have the mustache, and I kind of transition into what people know from the games as oh. Sully with the stash. So okay, stash is okay. I wore so the stash alert. at the end of the film and then I wore it for another film and then I was like, oh. you know what, I want to remind people that I what was the, the Sully. Ed- and then also, my sister so, and my brother okay, think I look know, so much like my dad great, with Mark. the mustache. Uh, uh, so we're out of time, giant, you know, sorry. Don't need to, that's yeah. not Oof, too much. That's, wow, he was very passionate about telling us about his mustache. He, he wore it in another film and wanted people to remember to remind people job. that he was Sully so he's actually carrying the marketing for Uncharted into other films it sounds like is that right Tom? It's, uh, it's the way they do it these days I guess I don't know crossovers are important Yeah, uh, Tom one last question before I know you're on a press junket right now we'll let you go but how many charts in fact are in uh, this film? oh that's a good question oh he uh, no oh. I will oh, interpret that say. to be. Gonna He's just going to drink from his VFX yeah, and chill right. mug and just wander off. All right, here. Hey, let's let's drop you back off at the press center so you can, Michael. You can handle this first a few. Oh, bye. Whoa, he ran off. He just ran. Okay. Well, that, that guy's limber. The guy's limber. So, Hosh, what do you want to do today? Bye, Michael. What do you? You can. We'll be back. What do you want to? We <laughs> well, can still hear you from far away. What do you want to do? Yeah, today? so I had to learn all about Uncharted from the trailer for this movie, uh, uh, it, which uh, was my first introduction into the entire world of Uncharted. And uh, as far as I can tell, it is, it, it's your exciting action-adventure, jungle Leanna Jones, Tomb raider world of uh, exploring the, uh, the great undiscovered world as the... Yeah, let's, Title let's, might indicate. Uh, let's actually, I've got, let's take a look at that trailer real quick. Oh, wow. This is not what I expected. Oh, that's very cool. They, I think they filmed a lot of this on location. Where? Um, oh, I didn't know Chris you know, Pratt was in this. Oh, Chris Pratt's in cool. everything. So Chris Pratt is Arctic. all of us. All right, so... Tom plays that dinosaur. No, there's Tom Holland. There he is. <laughs> the little dinosaur. The little one. <laughs> little guy. There he is. And it was Mark Mark work extraordinary for this. The behind the scenes, uh, yeah. once they come out of embargo, are, are really a sight. Yeah, really a sight. See. So, uh, oh, wow. Look at that cool. Uh, okay, I'm enough of this. That cool universal man out of butter. Let's talk about Uncharted. Uh, right. Yeah, so your yes. familiarity with this is from the trailer for the film, right? <laughs> Yeah, so this was the clearly the most exciting Fast and Furious. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's such a good Pratt fall from the trailer. Oh, Look at that. It's so good. Uh, that's a Holland fall. A Holland fall. Uh, Here's the thing. Uh, I, you know, after I when I first saw this trailer, I was like, a lot of people were, I was like, this is not similar to the game. I would have preferred a David O. Russell. Like there was a time when it was a David O. Russell. Uh, he was attached to it with uh, Bradley Cooper, and that could have been cool. But the more I, I, I love Ruben Fleischer, and there's a direct who dra- ended up directing this. And I am looking at this trailer, and I'm like, you know what? These action sequences are so outlandish, and they are actually very similar in tone and scale to the game. So I'm genuinely excited. Like, snark aside, I'm just speaking as a fan. 
a huge fan of Uncharted. I'm actually very excited for this movie. And I think this whole gag with the red, with the car and the crates and falling is really, really cool. I think it's so cool. In fact, Hashi, uh, we should try to do this on the show. I think that that sounds great. I have chartered a cargo plane. And I have, un- and I have Fiji. unchartered it. Uh, uh, Michael, that should have been well your done. joke. Mm. Well done. I'll where's see our, myself our dad joke groan drop. Oh, it's right yeah. here. There's Michael. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Wrong button. It's right here. Oh, damn it. There we go. Let's try one more time. I'll come back to it next time. That'll be more. Next time. Beautiful. So, so you want to attempt this multi-million dollar <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. flying out of a, out of the a problem. jet shot? Yeah, well, I don't see the problem at all. Sam, Sam from the chat is asking, do you think the fall is a digital double? I think it is a stunt until we cut to that scene where he's falling. And okay, real time, real time, real time, real time. Not real time. I would say real time. Real time. Real time. Not real time. No, that's say, real time. Well, maybe. No, I mean, that. It looks enhanced to me. I think that he filmed this action and yeah. he yeah. would believe that he performed that bit. Right. But I think that he's digital already. I think, well, I think, yeah, I think his, his face head might not might be, be real. But his head might right. be real. His body's digital. His, that body. All of him goes elbow, digital right the, there. The, the way the, yeah. the elbow creases happen right there. Oh, yeah. Very cool, but. And seamless. I mean, yeah. that's, it's amazing that you can do a blend like this right in front of. The it's camera. so fun. Like, I think, yeah, I think his head is practical there. And then when he goes back the right there, when his arm goes in front, I'd say that's probably a transition mm-hmm. to digital, to digi double. And then that's obvious. Now I have from the first trailer, they actually played this out as like one really awesome single shot. Wow. I love this. I think it's so fun. Look at that. So, so we zoom past him. Wow. That is like this is like free guy esque is is what I call like this. Yeah, I video game inspired uh, hyper realism. I want to do this. I kind of want to have falling person. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do this today on the show. I'm gonna do free falling me. I've got that model that you made of me a while back. And that sounds phenomenal. You're usually the Mixamo 3D guy, but I kind of want to take try and actually do it today. So this that is what I'm going to do. That sounds good. L- well, let's do it. I will. I'd be happy to talk uh, real quick about uh, the process of making our Digi Seth. Um, well, just, first, uh, just so the audience start- knows, what you are you going to do? Some crates today, or what are you going to do? Um, I, I like this moment too. I love that Tom Holland is having to struggle with like, crates and things flying out and trying to avoid them. And I was thinking that maybe if you're going to be falling out of a plane, I can inspire why you are falling out of this plane. <laughs> That's you're, and you're accomplishing everyone's dream today is how can we motivate Seth falling out of this plane? Yeah. So, uh, I'm going to be playing with, um, some, uh, ragdoll physics, uh, created by rocket lasso and applied to the Seth Worley, Mixamo special. And uh, Seth is going to be doing some distinct shot work uh, to try to recreate this insane moment. Yeah. So you want to just jump right in? Let's you jump right in. Fall right in, if you will. All right in. I mean, right. I mean, you say jump right in, but it's for 15 minutes into the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amazing. I mean, for some shows, that's good. That's fast. Um, Hashi, talk to me about baking the digital double. I think some people might be curious how you did it. Absolutely. So there is this a uh, wonderful little site, and let me just pull it up off screen and make sure that I have it all Mixamo? set up properly. Um, let's see. I'm going to open up both of these. Mixamo, powered by Adobe. I've got Mixamo set up on my site. If you want to, oh, I did yeah. log in. Come on, give me a sec. Log in, log in. If Let's you're interested see. in the ragdoll process, uh, you can check out Rocket Lasso's YouTube channel for that. Absolutely. He did a really wonderful um, uh, explanation of everything. Uh, at NA, was it for NAB last year, the 3D motion show? I can't remember. He talks about extensively about this process. Oh, if he did, a, if he did cool. a 3D motion show, then it'd be on Maxon's YouTube channel then. Excellent. Well, check that out. Oh, so, Blake, uh, you're about, Hashi is about to cover that exact topic. 
All right. So uh, we wanted a digital double of Seth. And what I ended up using for that was this very simple uh, website called avatarsdk.com. And they have this, uh, you can sign up for a free account. And then you can basically use this web-based interface to upload an image of somebody or use one of their pre-selected models and generate different types of uh, 3D figures out of those. So let me open up uh, one of the results of this process. Let's see, we got, um, where did I put you, Seth? I'm right here. Oh, oh. there you are. Let's see, when did I create a digital double of you? Probably around free the guy? 13th of August last year, right? It was our free I... guy episode, wasn't it? It was when we uh, when you were going to hit me with a car. Oh, yes. I, I, I'm i so kind to you. Oh, in, man, of course. In... All right. So uh, so feeding that, uh, that exciting program <laughs> uh, some <laughs> images. I forgot about this. <laughs> can result in uh, these phenomenal models that we have uh, here. Here I'm seen played by Ben Wishaw, uh, voice of Paddington, star of many James Bond films. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I like that. So they come in in a slightly generic um, like model, I guess, um, that they get applied to. And then you can do some exciting things with them. Like I didn't know about soft selection at the time, but uh, so I was using a lot of mesh brush to do stuff like uh, quaff the hair up and stuff like that, because that is a very important feature of a whirly uh, if you're going to portray them digitally. <laughs> but now that I know better, I would have just gone to point selection mode, grabbed something like this, and then, uh, oops, let me scooch it on over here, enable the soft selection tool like that, because. This would allow you to grab, and you can kind of see it visualized here, just a nice my hair. section of hair. Oh, like, look at this. Nice. You can Jimmy Neutron you up or, you know, or... Uh, I'm, at, I'm at Jimmy Neutron point right now. That's why I'm wearing a hat, because my hair is significantly... Love it. But it and who's a... Uh, I'm a Martin Short's uh, um, character. Is, oh, yeah. Is there you go. Michael doesn't even know who 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 that is. I don't. Wait. Oh, I've I've done something horrible back here. I but love anyway, how at grayscale. Any, a, any a, model a, of me at grayscale looks like Egon Spangler, and I'm completely comfortable with that. It is. In fact, we could just tint this thing blue and do uh, some <laughs> spoiler alerts for afterlife. Uh, spoiler Egon alerts for the afterlife. When you die, this will have been spoiled for you. Yes. Uh, let's see. And um, I believe, Seth, that the uh, the body that we are using for you today, uh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I like jacked. that aspect ratio. Let's, is, uh, I have me up here right here. Bit. This model you made of me, like I I showed it to my son, and the first thing he said was, "You're jacked." Like this is a. <laughs> This is the most fit version of me that's ever existed. It's really just because you were too loose of clothing, Seth. I think that if you were to uh, true. I'm, I'm yeah, actually embrace, too, embrace. I'm, actually, I'm actually two children stacked on top of each other underneath these clothes, uh, walking around. That, that is understandable. I just believe, so you know that the, the the chat is loving Seth's hair in this. Uh, Excellent. That, hey, who doesn't? It's the whirly wave. Whirly wave, the whirly swoop. The whirly wave is actually better for alliteration. I've heard it referred to as the swoop as well. The most important part here of I'm, I'm, that's I'm, only I'm, for folks who call you swirly. I'm a, nope, nope. We're not in middle school, and you aren't bullies, so I'm fine with it's, it. Seth, I was almost sure that that uh, you were one. Of, your outfit came from one of these uh, Mixamo characters. I and love then, that sauntering. I'm too jacked to put my arms down walking. <laughs> yeah, you said arm put, space huge. I'm going to have you walk in place. <laughs> and we'll give it a little, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I can't, I can't, angle. I can't hold my arms straight down nor shoot a basket. I'm so jacked. Mm. I mean, you can tell by the way. I walk. I'm a ladies yeah. man. And I yeah. do not have time to talk. That's the opposite right. of the show. You know what, I don't have an iron shirt either. 
Oh, I was almost silent positive we you fell. came from your your body came from Mixamo, but I'm I'm not seeing uh, who whose outfit we stole. Well, but, it's, uh, it in looks, either case, did you I you had to have recolored that, uh, it? You had to have recolored it because it looks exactly like my Whelm Yourself outfit, which it does look like Whelm Yourself. Fun outfit. fact was inspired by the wardrobe of design of. Uh, stylings of Scott, Scott Ackerman on the Comedy Bang Bang TV show, which I just so happened to be uh, drinking from my Comedy Bang Bang mug today. Shout out to Scott Ackerman, who definitely watches this. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. Friend of the show. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> so um, in either case, uh, we were able to get this. Uh, maybe it was a make human model. I don't know. I do know that we were trying to match the Whelm Yourself outfit, and I did have to do some uh, texture recoloring, but uh, this is uh, basically me just deleting the old head and jamming uh, Seth's head right onto mm. this model, and then exporting an FBX that Seth could upload to Mixamo. So is that what you've done over there, Seth? Yeah, so I uploaded myself to Mixamo, and obviously the first thing people do is they find the uh, the dance Gangnam moves. Gangnam style, yeah. And uh, they mess around with it. So here's me in my natural resting state. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Fun fact, oh, I thriller. did nice. this exact dance in a high school play once, so this site actually did exist at one point. Um, but yeah, so oh, I took this, and I found this specific... Uh, I typed in falling and I found this, which is fun. Well, it's like a skydive. Hey, it's like, a dude falling. I, I, I meant to fall skydive pose. Exactly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And what I love is it has a slider that says flail. Oh, so nice. I turn that up and then, oh no. I, oh, see now you don't look like you mean to fall. Yeah. And body angle. I found if I put it like this, it gave me kind of the, I, I feel like the body angle is like adjusting his legs, but maybe not. Um, it's adjusting uh, his uh, like his, posture, right? The torso, yeah. So so the whole thing changes. I set it at this angle because it kind of flattened his body the most and made it most neutral for because I'm going to have him just flipping well, around everywhere. Well, we could always we could refer to uh, to the live action footage if we were going to. Uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot we had do this. something like this. Uh, this is uh, this is you last week. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, you haven't aged a day, a day since last week. <laughs> I haven't. This is uh, yeah, me wearing my Stu Mashowitz mask uh, or beard. Yes, and I like hair. your. I like this the battle royale uh, shirt you have, inspired by our last show. Oh, is this going to be a digital effect or a practical effect? So we were filming uh, a friend of mine jump off this cliff for a, a series we were making. And then I, we had just gone to Hawaii to shoot. This is in Tennessee, but we had shot the bulk of this, ser this like web series we made in, it's called adventure. Now shot the bulk of it in Hawaii. And then we, while in Hawaii, we did all this fun stuff. Like don't play it yet. Oh, oh there it is. Oh. We did all this fun stuff, like swinging, like swinging off these like ropes into, into rivers and the ocean and things. And I never do that kind of stuff. But on this trip, I was like, I'm going to live forever. And I did it. And so getting back to Tennessee, we went out to shoot this stunt. We didn't get to shoot in Hawaii. And I was like, I'm going to jump off this, like, because I am going to live forever. And this is the last time I did anything like this because I didn't estimate that my life would flash before my eyes jumping off of this thing. And I would like <laughs> didn't need glasses plant before you hit, hit the water. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we are. Let's see. Thought about it for a second. Boom. Hey, that's nice. pretty impressive, Seth. And let's see. So for some live action uh, <laughs> flail reference, actually, I, I think we have, you have uh, nailed it. It's it a little more like this. Okay, there we go. So always, so yeah, reference, <laughs> real life reference is there phenomenal. Is. And there it is. I, uh, I do admire that we actually do have that of, of the Seth Worley. So I got this, I downloaded it, and I brought it into cinema, and I have that somewhere. Why don't I open that? Yeah, why not, Seth? Well, I'll tell you why not. I don't know. Um, I'm able to open file. Let me find it. In the meantime, I'm going to yeah. show y'all. Um, I want to start uh, throwing things at, uh, at Seth in the back of a plane. 
And I have this great start, these two models, a, uh, a cool uh, wrapped thing and a palette, but I want to kind of marry these together. And so yesterday I had this thought that I could create a little plane like this. Mm. And one of the fun things about cinema is that you can tag anything using these simulation tags. Like I could tag these two uh, solid objects to be cloth colliders. And then if I wanted to, cloth colliders. I Sorry. see, I can make that into some geometry, this plane, and then add a cloth tag to that, a simulation cloth tag. And just like that, I can press play and that'll like drape this cool little cloth over this thing ready for a picnic lovely look at that and so i thought this would be a good way to do some uh nice looking straps around this uh kind of object so i'm going to delete my tag on that and let me undo a couple of steps back to where my plane is interactive so i can make it longer like this i can make it narrower like that and i'll add a i don't need very many segments on this short side so i'll just do like three and for the width segments i'll crank that up a bit so i have a lot of little bits and you'll see once i press c to make that editable if i go to point mode or whatever you can see now i got a lot of little bits of geometry on this thing so just like it did before i can take these uh sorry <laughs> Just for the, looking at these for those curious, the, screen. the little bits are also often referred to as polygons by lesser <laughs> people. <laughs> the the little little squares that make up the bigger squares. So, I will uh, just control copy out a couple of these. Maybe control rotate a few around like uh, to ninety or so. Hey, why didn't I, why didn't my rotate duplicate? Whatever. All right. So I'll make uh, all of these little uh, straps that are kind of aligned somewhere above this, and then we'll add those cloth tags to it. So now, let's, what you're about uh, to do, go. I've seen it. Can you add little animated birds to do what you're about to do with those things? I should. If there's one in the asset browser, I definitely am. So I'm going to turn just one to cloth for a second and show you what's going to happen. So when I press play, look, it goes and drapes itself right over the... Uh, Right over, just like it's one of those little like plasticky zip tie things. But it also gets all stretched out kind of weird and loses some of its, uh, you know, presence. So I found out that if you turn up the number of iterations uh, when you have the cloth tag selected and press play again, a lot more fidelity for the for that thickness. So if I do this and I grab uh, the same cloth tag, I think I can just control copy it to everything else, right? You you can, yes. Nice. Why do they why do they disappear? What did I do? What did I do? I don't know. Where'd you go? Do it again while I'm watching. Uh come back. Okay, we're back. What the heck? I don't know where they went. They disappeared. Whatever. Okay. Um, I need four of these. And I want some of these higher than the others. Bump, bump. Oh, <laughs> you're just aligned with your other one. Oh, maybe it did it copy all their positions to the same place. Whatever it did. Uh, let's uh, let's just go add the cloth tags to all of these. Simulation cloth. Let's select those cloth tags and turn up the number of iterations let's see if that got all of them or just the top one good that got all of them so now look at this let me make this a little bit bigger for y'all to watch this exciting process just press play and all these costs drop and wrap right around there and right at the last moment they kind of swing inward and if i pause right there boom look at that it's so nice, cool. like organic. Hashi, yeah. that is so satisfying. I really want to watch you do that again. I'm gonna do that, that means again he wasn't and again in a slow motion. Boom! That is satisfying. So nice. It's borderline inappropriate how satisfying that is. So 
wait, so now I could copy. Oh, it doesn't want to copy because of the sim being applied to it. All right, whatever. Anyway, that led me to uh, creating a lovely. Um, Let's just do a new project, and I'm going to import uh, what I was able to create, which is just this cute little uh, single palette right here. Whoops. We're all married, so I can't make a joke out of you saying single palette. But just know no. that it was there. Oh, this is fun. Can you sing your song for this one that you sang? for? <laughs> oh, yes. I, I do need to. Let's see. First, wait. Let's... Uh, let's... I, I moved my my files, and so I've got to. Oh, well, while you find your sync. files, maybe I'll, I'll just real quick catch everybody up on my side. I yes. So I I brought the Mixamo file, which I believe is an FBX, right? That it uh, comes back as FX something F. Uh, F FBX, you're FX, correct. And opened up in Cinema 4D, and here you can see me just falling and just high fiving everyone on the way down, and I. <laughs> can export this in cinema. Just go to file export as an OBJ. And this is a fun thing we've added. I didn't, I don't, we, this has probably been around for forever in cinema 40, but it wasn't the like when I first started trying to do this stuff, you export an OBJ and export, you can export the animation with it and say all frames. Isn't that cool? Super great. And I click okay. It's a plugin for that, but that's, fantastic yeah and so it saves a whole bunch of obj's and then i go i'm because i'm you know still i still know very little and nothing i'm uh i bring it in after effects because that's the interface that i am still most familiar with but i use element just to bring it into after effects for me and i do you know file import 3d sequence and i import this 3d sequence and i end up with this uh uh egon spangler uh from the real ghostbusters falling and high-fiving people. And I can just reconnect these uh, uh, these materials. Uh, that's where I'm at. And next I'm going to create the environment and such, but I want to see how she's great slide. That is beautiful. So I just took a plane and like warped some of the edges up to make this little uh, slide of sorts. And then I took that uh, crate and put it in the middle of uh, an emitter, which is just right up here and just emits one palette per second. And uh, if you go and you check show objects and render instance, you can get kind of like a, a repeating cool uh, factory of pal This is sloppy uh, quality control, but uh, uh, let me also turn up the stop emission point to beyond the end. There we go. So hey, now Grant I can. Film learning is in the chat. Hey, Grant, how's it going? Grant, good early, early morning to you, sir. So yeah, now we got uh, a bunch of these going down a ramp, which is lovely. So I'm going to try to combine this with uh, that ragdoll that we had of you, Seth, from a few, uh, man, from uh, last uh, August, where we were uh, doing oh, yeah. ragdoll games. Uh, so I've got me here falling... I'm going to go to quarter resolution because I'm doing a live show while I do this. And Clever. so I want to look at that. You found the fuselage. I uh, Did you make that? I, I made this fuselage. I looked at last night for one and just gave up after a little while. I could, the it was, it was pretty straightforward. I just in uh, cinema went to a little angle like this and just kind of drew. Whoops. Let's see. I just, uh, there we go. I just drew a little shape that kind of seemed round enough and then was flat on the bottom. And I could have used some kind of symmetry for this, but I didn't. I just guessed. And then uh, once I had this exciting shape, I just went over to here and then uh, extruded this shape out. Whoops. What do I need to be in? I don't know. FYI, if you're going to do a... Oh, you keep going. You finish this, then I'll, can't I, then I'll can't talk I about that? environments. What yeah, did I can. do? You cannot. You I added... Do? You put that spline in an extrude object. Yeah, I guess. I thought that you could just... You could do some kind of a thing on it. So I'll, I'll throw it into an extrude object. I'm going to turn off the caps here. Um, yes, okay. unlike, oh, unlike Seth Worley, it does not want a cap. 
No. No caps. <laughs> Basic. Let's uh, extrude this a little bit longer, like that. And then uh, rotate it on its side here. Boom, 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 boom. And I don't really, I just want it as a framing device. So it looks like the you know back of a airplane. And I needed some kind of a texture. So I just went over to the asset browser. And under materials, let's see, what did I look for? I think it was under, uh, let's see, it wasn't metal, but it, oh, it's probably under tiles. So tiles, we've got floor and wall tiles, including these floor tiles right here. And Subway just drag tile? them right onto that. It, the interior download of... from the cloud. And look at that. Oh, nice. I would I Looks... would fully expect the interior of my like cargo plane to be all subway tile. Uh, See, so backsplash. it's actually oh yeah, it is actually just like cool like kitchen. <laughs> it's kitchen tile, it's backsplash. Just way, tiles. way, way scaled up, yeah. Yeah, but uh it gives the impression of a of a fuselage or a or a shower drain. I know, one or the other. Or I know terms <laughs> for things. Uh, so I am going to make, uh, the sky here. Like I'm actually going to set up my scene here involving my camera and our ocean in sky. Can you mind if I do that real quick while you are you at a place where you can be working on stuff that doesn't need to be explained while I do that? Sure. So, uh, I, uh, so first off, let's, we want to make the scene and when you're, let's pull a look at the clip. Like when we are, you're doing uh, shots like especially in like the sky or in space uh, the you really don't it, you, what you want is just to be inside of a big sphere that is going to reflect the camera orientation but not your camera pan and, and pan and um, position because um, when the horizon is like so far away your camera it, your camera moving left and right is barely noticed or moving forward and back especially is barely noticed but like any rotation or orient is change in orientation of the camera. That's where you notice the change. And that's what makes, uh, a like horizon, uh, background look like a horizon background. So a horizon, huh? Yeah, horizon. horizon. I'm using the word as much as I can because horizon. I'm going to obviously use uh trap code horizon. Um, I create a new solid I'll call horizon it horizon. Was, was, did I, did I jump in on time? You did it. And yes. I'm going to apply horizon. And at first it's just a great, let's actually bring a camera in so we can see what's going on here. Uh, and we want it to be, if you look at the, the reference, when Tom is close, his head gets pretty big and then he gets far away. Like as he gets closer, it gets bigger. That's a pretty wide lens on there. And it wider, the wider the lens, the more dramatic the forward and back motion is. So I am going to just going to do a camera that's uh, 20 mil. Okay, and I will fly, start flying this guy around, and you'll see orbiting around me, and the horizon. You see, it, it's just a gradient right now. It's like we're on, we're inside of a big sphere. Um, you can actually in Horizon set an image map. So I have some Ooh. image map. I have some. I have some like oceans and. Uh, I Eleven these, of them. These are from Production Crate. <laughs> Gosh, you silly man. Um, which one did I use? I don't remember. I tested this earlier. Let me reference my test uh, sky. So, HDR Ocean One is what I used. So, I'm gonna drop this Ocean One down in here and turn off its visibility. And in Horizon, I'm gonna say. Hey, you reference that. So now as I fly around, you'll see uh, I've got this ocean and sky behind me. And if I just pan with the camera, only I move in the background does not. If I go, for, if I zoom forward and back, dolly forward and back, I, back, I get no motion. But when I uh, rotate, that's when it happens. So that's what you want. And that's why Horizon is so freaking useful. Now, I don't like how this sky and ocean look. I, I have this for the ocean. I like the ocean surface, but I there's a I have some sky maps that I had on my hard drive from, I believe these are video co-pilot ones uh, from uh, the like flight kit pack or something that he has. And these are cool sky like 360s. The problem with them is, so here, if I, it's super great sky up here. The problem is they're mirrored. Um, top and bottom. And I want to see ocean 
underneath, just like in the reference. Uh, I want that like teal uh, ocean and maybe islands. I'm going to not do islands today because I just don't want to. Um, but I can com- I'm going to combine these to the sky and the uh, this the sky and this ocean, both of these backdrop backdrops. So I'm going to which one I have selected now, sky mirrored. I'm going to pre-compose it and I'm going to leave all attributes and I'm going to call this my sky PC. And I'm going to delete that ocean HDRI that I had from production crate in here and go into the sky pre-comp and then drop that ocean down in there. And I'm going to fit to comp width. And then I'm going to mask to where I'm just seeing the ocean. I'm going to do a fairly big mask on this side here so I can feather it. Beautiful. And the bottom of that is uh, you won't get any seaming issues by not stretching that. Uh, just doing fit to. That's an excellent question, and I don't know. <laughs> Control Alt F or maybe Option Alt F. Uh, for going. Uh, oh, for just stretching it? I should. You're right. I can just. Uh, because you, there will be some seaming that happens in Horizon. Fit. Let's just fit to comp so it stretches. There we go. That's smart. So redraw that mask there, and feather the crap out of it. And there's a couple things. So I, I've combined them, but oh nope. But they're not going to look like great right off the bat. For one, their luminance, like they're. They're like light values, like are very, (laughs) very day and night. Yes. Uh, Thank you. God, I should have been able to come up with that one. Um, So I'm going to crank up, I'm going to apply levels and just turn up the levels on this ocean here and see what that gets me. You're getting somewhere. Okay. So that's not bad. Look Uh, at that. I want kind of want you to use the offset effect to get the suns in roughly the same position. Well, I am going to the offset effect. That's not a bad idea. I well, it's I'm a gonna, great idea, Michael. I'll is, say it. It's good. The problem is, I'm going to, I'm gonna, it does. I'm gonna be creating a new sun anyway. Like so, which I could get meticulous here with this with the sun, but just for the purposes of what of expediency, I'm not going to. But well, you'd be done with the offset effect already. Nope. If Michael suggested it, so no. No. What I am going to do is remember what I did in my test. I think that I did, I used Colorista. Okay, yeah. So I want to get that like teal look from the, the original, that like hyper teal look and get them kind of unified. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer and I'm going to apply Colorista. And what I can do here is I can go to the hue saturation uh, wheels and I'm going to crank that blue into the te- like closer toward teal. And I might even turn the temperature down, the tint, like basically try to get these things unified looking. And uh, what did I do? I don't remember what I did the first time around. That's even a different sky than the one I'm using. Uh Uh-oh, guys, I'm forgetting what I did. Sky mirrored six? Okay, I used the wrong sky. My bad. But I dig dig this process, the combining of uh, different elements to make a cool reflection map. Now, hang on. Now you're right. I should do offset. Now that I'm looking at it, Michael. (laughs) You all can't see my faces. How's that? How's that? How's that? My my, my face was saying I told you so in the most sarcastic way possible. In the most motorcycle-y way motorcycle <laughs> um so now this is what my background is looking like i think i could so this now, yeah that, that's pretty beautiful I was just saying, are, you pl- are you planning to use this in element to affect your element scene lighting as well yeah so what's nice about this is this sky pc is like here still in in my uh, comp and i can just go into element and uh set my physical environment to sky PC. And so it will light me and affect my light and reflections. Um, 
I am going to do a little more. Uh, I'm going to, like I said before, I want to create a fake sun. In fact, I'm going to, we can, Hashi, what do you work on? I'm gonna, I'm, wait, I'll tell you what I'm going to do so if people care and are watching so we can both make progress at the same time. I'm going to move the sun a little back over to where I want to put a flare um, based on the shot. I'm going to add a plane, and I'm going to animate my camera, my handheld camera move, my, animate my camera movement and add some shake and handheld stuff to it. So uh, we can check back in once I get to the handheld stuff. But what do you, <laughs> what the hell so, have you made over so, there? So, uh... If any of you are a fan of Hot Wheels, um, <laughs> I have set up uh, here a, a nice little ramp with this low poly car uh, with some with a little physics tag on it, and um, I've also placed that crate emitter that we had uh, right here in the middle. So as you can kind of see, what this system does is you can kind of ignore what it looks like, but the idea is it looks like the uh, oh you you've become this cool shadow man. <laughs> Seth. Uh, what's the what's the character's name from Sin City, where you just see his glasses and the silhouette? It really, you really have just become that Elijah Wood's character. Oh yeah, no, he's a creep. In that one. Which uh, in the movie, what, not in real life, that I know. What of. happened? Let's see. Elements. That guy here. Three D stuff. Uh, Seth. Yeah. Tex. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually just trying to find your. Uh, is it, was this your? Your skin texture? Is it my normals? Remember hey, I have a normal issue? Oh, okay. You got it. Cool. Okay. So now we've got Seth from uh, the uh, Whelm Yourself promo. And he's sort of facing out the back of this window or this uh, open airplane hangar. Now, the way this ragdoll system works is there is this field, a uh, little linear field that I can move up and down like this. When I press play, it's going to try to hover Seth kind of in the middle of this, which is kind of cool. But at the same time as all of that's happening, over on this end, we're going to start getting pallets spewing toward him and a car rolling down this crazy ramp at him. So... What I would like to do, Seth, is see what your uh, object avoidance uh, chops are like, your acrobatic skills. Uh, so I'm going to give you the option, uh, the default strength for this linear field that tries to keep you right around here is 300. Would you like to increase or decrease, Seth? I was definitely listening. What am I going to increase and decrease? You're going to pick a number probably between zero and a thousand ish. Oh, easy. 1274. 1274. That's over a thousand. That's, <laughs> that's not between you know zero and a thousand. <laughs> okay. Well, 974. You know, time is circular. There's a, th you know, there's a, uh, so we're going to go ahead and set this linear field, which is a force field that is basically trying to pull both your head and upper body into this realm in the middle here. So I think by turning up the power of that, you might experience a little jump right when I start. Let's see. Let's play this. Boom. Oh. Oh, I have medication <laughs> hey, to prevent what? this situation. That's okay. You did a cool lost jump, you know, the... Uh, no. Do you remember? Evan remembers that moment when the the plane, like the person in the back, is like boom and oh, slams that the is the ceiling. Like a, yeah, it looks more like a shot, like a Brooks and Shawshank Redemption jump, if you know what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, yeah, it, it does a bit. So uh, we're gonna try to avoid stay on this side of the line with that. All right, so you're you're jumping. We're playing Seth Flappy Bird, <laughs> and the obstacles are coming. Oh, come and get me! Oh my gosh, we only have 90 frames to work with. That is. A crime. Let's increase this to 500 frames. And uh, let's double check our emitter. Our emitter is going to emit for, uh, let's say, the first like 400 seconds. And then that car is going to come careening down as well. So, Seth, let's see how you do. And action. Mm. Oh, he's doing okay. Ooh. He's doing okay. Come and get me, Crates. Oh, you made it on the first one. Nice. Over okay. the second one. Ooh, you're doing good. Ooh, I think that got your feet. This motion is strange. Yeah. This is one that is reserved for my wife. Oh, oh no, oh, the oh. car. Oh, okay. Ooh. The car, the car gotcha. Car gotcha. He always does. Sneak that always car does. in there with those crates, Let's, as they say. All right, let's see. Um, Michael, you want to pick a number between 
zero and twelve seventy four or whatever. <laughs> two hundred and eighty six. Two hundred and eighty six. All right. Two hundred and eighty six. Now we're gonna have Michael try. People in the chat all agree on one number, and we'll try it out. Ooh, I like this. You're just you're kind of hanging out. Yeah, He's ready for it. Rather than run, boom. There boom. we go. That's nice. Wait. Oh, oh staying in the plane. Stay in the plane. Oh. I think I'm gonna save zone oh, just, now. That car is gonna take just me. Just chilling. Out no, oh, I'm just gonna jump. Oh, no. oh, 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 oh. oh. Goodbye. Oh, there's no gravity out there. No. No, it's you're you're caught in a little turbulence thing. All right, <laughs> so because screen. we're on a linear Sorry. field, it's gonna it's trying that to keep you field, in that plane. That linear Sorry. field needs to fall off, needs a fall off of its own, which you can do. You can put fields in fields, which is great. I found my oh. new screensaver for my computer on my side over here. That is beautiful. Egon now, if you could be hit by a flying toaster. <laughs> That's, a, that's an old school reference for you old school folks. Yes, Zoomers is. have no idea what a toaster is, much less one flying. Let's do All right, okay. You know what? I'm just going to convert this linear field to a little... Uh, should I do a box field or a spherical field? Cylindrical. Cylindrical? So right. far, the chat is unanimous, and your next number should be 504. 504. Unanimous. Unanimous. Like Perfect. All right. So force field. We've got five oh four. One person. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go, everybody. And action. Oh, it's not the space bar. It's what is it? F eight. Oh. Here you go. You can make it. You can do it. Oh. Ah. Uh, oh no. Oh. 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 Sorry, Seth. Just obliterated. Well, that it's okay. knocked him out. Wait. Eh, oh eh. gosh. Oh. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Solid. Oh, that's pretty great. Big fan. Oh. Uh, For those of you trying to guess what the reference was to flying toasters, it was an the old 90s. screensaver pack. From, called After Dark, right? Yes, it was called After Dark. It oh. had flying toasters who uh, did all kinds of things, like barrel rolls and uh, e even more unusual things. They had wings, mind you. What was wings? They also had screensaver well, I mean, yeah, dog how, that would run around, around your desktop and grab your files on folders and shred them and dig holes in your computer and pull out wires on the monitor. Not really, so obviously. So funny that like toasters were such a prevalent thing in tech. Then, like, video toaster, like, I guess just those two. Video toaster and the flying toasters. But they were like a, they were like a go-to funny thing for tech. They're hilarious. They are. Here we are. And, they and there have were wings. Keyboard, like there were keyboard things you could hit that would make the that would make like toast go into the toasters. Like he, it was like an interactive screensaver. Uh, and again, for younger people, screensavers used to be important because monitors would have burn in if the same thing was left on the screen all the time. So you had to have something pop up on the screen to change it. And that was otherwise where... your monitor would have your word document burned into it. Uh, burn in is when the actor Ed, Ed Burns comes over to your house and steals your monitor. Um, it was a prevalent threat in the nineties and a hilarious joke now in the 2020s. Y'all remember where we were when, uh, Ed Burns stole our first <laughs> monitor. You get wise after that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm falling. And I got a wiggle on my position. This is the fun stuff. And I've got just an X rotation happening, which this right here is like uh, probably good enough for me to start doing the camera. I do want a little bit more chaos in the rotation. So I may... Do Z, Z. Well, should I do Z or uh, Y? I guess Z. Yeah, Z is a good idea. Why Z, Seth? Hmm? Nothing. I, I, ignore me. All right, oh. I'm going to see if I can interactively drag this field around. And oh, wait, no, oh, no, pick him up, pick him up. And let's try oh, off the floor. Oh, jump. No. Oh, I'm so terrible at Uncharted. <laughs> at Uncharting. <laughs> this is the next version of the game. You try to float your you have to, uh, <laughs> chosen character that's yeah, out of the way of boxes. Wait, wait, I got to capture him in the force field. And move the force field up slowly enough that I get flying Seth. Whirly. Oh. Oh, and here comes the car. 
here it comes. Let's see. I got to jump in between. Jump. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry, Seth. It's okay. It's worth it. Oh. Oh, there I go. Look at that. That's so fun. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear. All right. Well, I'm thinking that now that uh, we know why you fell out of this plane, uh, I could maybe move on to something a little bit more useful, which you is uh, which useful. is one of my backup ideas, which is showing people how to uh, create a cool, like, a jungle ruins scene. Yeah. So not tried this out, but I did download this cool uh, art grid uh, piece of footage, and it's flying over this little river, a place that, you know, like people would never actually build a structure because there's water there, and that's a foolish idea. But I think it might look cool. So Movie makers tend to put buildings right on picturesque rivers, not paying attention to the fact that no sane person, except for that one architect who built a river through a house, would do that. That's right. So some, you know, basic things. Let's set the ground plane and origin and create a solid and camera. And then because my camera move is oriented kind of this way, I'm going to rotate this little plane. So it's what I think of as like facing the camera. And then I'm going to rename this solid to floor like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to use our very own cool plugin or script. What should, what should I call this module uh, created by Joe over at workbench.tv called the normalized track script. And this thing is just a delight because it will take all of this uh, tracked data. Let me see just for example, what everything looks like. Let's just, uh, make a little 3D layer of text, and I'll say, make it 3D. Where did it, it go, Hashi? It went, Where did it go? It went right here, and it's all, and it's very small. Like so, like it's in there, but why here? That's very silly. That uh, is very silly, Hashi. <laughs> so now, what if, let's say, before I had turned that into a 3D layer, what if I had renamed this layer floor, and then just clicked this one button solution that. Joe came up with like that. And now I turn this test layer of text to 3D. Hey, look at that. The silliness in relative, is significantly less. Mm. Yes, it kept it in the same relative position, but it puts it right near the center of all of this. And so See, my whole world is centered nicely right here. What you've so just done to, looks like every lost DVD menu that existed. Uh, it really is. This is how this is how you learned how you got post-production work in the uh, early aughts. Yep. You learned motion tracking and mm -hmm. sans serif font and you were in. Yep. I uh, very... Uh, infamously did this exact thing for the uh, inaugural season of Naked and Afraid, everybody. <laughs> the uh, gra <laughs> graphics package uh, graphics artist package. right here. It's an unfortunate term. A very unfortunate term. And also unfortunate if you were any of my friends who I handed off blur work to. I didn't, I didn't do any of the blur work myself. Yeah. But uh, the people who work on those shows, man. It's a, you know, yes. uh, Hey, real quick. I just want to check, talk about, I've checking on mine. I've got, uh, I've got animation, the camera just animated on Y, uh, positioning. So I fall and pass and I'm not uh, doing and just keeping point of interest right at the center of the comp and keeping me at the center of the comp. So I'm not actually animating me falling. Me is just sitting there in the middle of the comp, just wiggling around, uh, and spinning. You are set, reverse set, engineering yeah. like uh, the motion control systems of old. Now, Seth, Seth uh, the chat is wondering how, how you got your camera moved that smooth. They say they can never get their camera animations to be that smooth. It's very simple. I am only animating one thing. I separated my uh, the dimensions, position dimensions out. So I, right, I control clicked or right clicked it and did separate dimensions. So now I have X, Y, and Z separately. And then I just the point of interest, if you have a, a two node camera, it's always going to stay pointed at whatever you have the point of interest set to. So the point of interest is set uh, to look straight at me uh, and where the general area where I am. 
and I just animate the camera position to go up and down. And as it does that, it auto orients the camera to point toward that point of interest. So I don't, I'm not animating keyframes based on like moving my camera around. I'm doing it down here uh, in the uh, keyframe controls down here. And so it's just a up to down move and the camera orients, auto orients to point uh, where I am. And, but so it's super smooth and that's fun. So now I've got to make it crazy. Uh, there's a couple ways I'm going to add wiggle. I'm going to add a uh, camera shake and wiggle. There's kind of two, for, there's more than two, but like bare minimum, there's two different types of shake I want to add. And one of them is like the general, like broad camera shakes. Like it's the, I am falling through the sky and I'm holding a camera. And so I can't keep it steady on one thing. Like, so the camera is actually moving around. And then I want the actual, like this like camera jitter that happens from your like, hard the camera hardware itself shaking around uh inside itself like the the lens is shaking on the front of it um the sensor in the back is like everything is shaking on just slightly different uh wavelengths because it's a Your JJ's, you know, flawed camera yes my jj abrams as well which is why you know the great shake and we could talk about a lot about lost today in lost in the airplane uh, and the uh, uh, the plane scenes in the Lost Pilot and uh, all throughout the first Star Trek, JJ is like drumming on the film magazine to actually shake the film itself as it's running through the camera. And so you get this really organic, cool shake and jitter. And so that, I'm going to add that shake with universe uh, camera shake in a second. There's a preset for car mount that I use and I slightly modify and I make sure motion blur is turned on. And so that gives me the slight jitter and then gives me the jitters. And then this, the main big camera motion, I'm going to start by all clicking point of interest and adding a wiggle. Let's say five. So frequency of five. And I don't remember what I did. Maybe it was Let's say well, in a minute. Well, you think about that. You did bring up a really cool point, which is if you're breaking down any kind of camera shake and you want to use expressions for it, it is really important for you to imagine how you think it's being filmed. Yep. So if you're doing this big, like swooping crane shot and you know that you want a little bit of jitter just because the camera would be a little bit loose on that thing, you can set up a rotation point for the camera that is not the actual camera or its point of interest. You can add a fake jib arm or you can add a fake like underswing thing and so the types of rotation and jitter you get on the camera are mimicking all the physical components of what went into it absolutely yeah it's it's an, one of the problems a lot of camera moves have is that by default the point of rotation is the the uh, the point where the camera is seeing like the it's either the Film, if, it, if it's an imaginary film camera or the, the um, oh, what's the word, sensor in a digital camera. But real life cameras don't pivot from that point, generally speaking. They would pivot from the person holding it because they're moving their shoulders or their body. Or if it's on a crane, like you said, it's pivoting from the crane point of view. Or if it's like, it's never pivoting from right where that point is. So camera moves lose, like, they feel more CG when they're pivoting from right where the sensor is rather than pivoting from some ar alternate location. They do. So over on my side, I'm just doing a very straightforward thing of adding a some a 3D object into a 3D camera tracked scene. Now, for the sake of trying to not be to do lots of cultural appropriation, I am grabbing a photo scan of uh, a of an art directed uh, totem at uh, Disneyland. So it's designed to look. So it's uh, their appropriation and not yours. They the famously, you know, no appropriation going on here. Smart, but um, but this is but this is specifically designed to be devoid of uh, that. And so, what's great about a photo scan is that, like, look at this. Like already a photo scan. Look at that. Fits beautifully into here, and this is pre uh, any kind of integration or anything. Now the the part that suffers is this interaction right here. So I've got to decide how I want to make this 3D model interact with this bizarro, uh, you know, ground situation that I have going on. So I'm going to 
bring it down a little bit so its contact point would be right in the middle of the water. Uh, and just like I said, you know, not a great idea, but uh, we'll pretend that something was known about this specific point that uh, made it specifically suitable to set this in here. Let me rotate this around and try to find the angle where its lighting kind of matches the general lighting of what's going on in here. It's a little bit top down and it's just ever so slightly from the left. I can't quite tell. I'm trying to look at these trees for an indication. The best thing about the soft lighting is that you get kind of both, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you all think? Mm. I honestly feel like you ask an orientation, like which I I'm trying to see what the, Ooh. what the world's lighting is. I mean, it's very flat, um, which is nice. Yeah. And well, it notice was, it's it was lighter on the left than it is on the right, which tells me that the light source is probably coming from camera right off behind. Cause there's more shadow on the right side of trees than there is on the left. So, you know what? So closer to this, probably. The, the thing about a photogrammetry model is that its lighting is baked in. So I'm trying to find the rotation on it that is similar enough to the way the lighting is here. And I think we've found it there because its brightest side is, is right here facing uh, where we think the lighting is facing in this. Yeah, something like that. That looks nice. Cool. And uh, one cool thing, like, right away that I could do... Uh, well, actually, I do want to obscure this weird base thing. So let me go into the scene setup for this. And I'm going to create a just some garbledygook that, like, that this can interact with. So let me create a new group for just a second. And in this group, let's... Uh, let me see if there's anything in the starter pack that... Uh, that could work for this. I'm I'm looking for weird, random, bumpy shapes. So let's grab maybe it's very exciting <laughs> rocks. Hey, there's some rocks. That works because there are rocks in this scene, right? So, uh, rocks could be lovely. Yes. I'll, uh, I'll scale them down a little bit like this. And then, uh, let's just say, okay, for a moment. And I'm going to hide my group one for a second. And for group two, I'll create a little null. So, uh, I've got this little rock in there somewhere. Let's see. Can I see it? Or did I turn it off right at the last minute? What did I do? Oh, I didn't assign it a group number. The exciting things you learn. The exciting right. things you learn. Group two. There we go. Okay, so there's a rock. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move the null that's connected to this rock. Kind of look at what the, uh, <laughs> the other rocks in the area look like. And I'm scale this down a bit to the size of said rocks. And then I'm going to use the particle uh, duplication system within this. Uh, under particle look, uh, let's do, uh, where is it? Particle replicator. Let's do this as a plane. If I say plane, I can turn up the number of particles in it. And now I've got a bunch of rocks like this. Uh, on the shape options, I think I can scatter them a little bit. So we're getting kind of something different. I'm going to scale down their overall shape. Scale down the... Uh, whoops. How many things are there? Seth, you're welcome to talk, too. This is just me doing some oh, I am junky just, uh, uh, moving things around. Trying to create a little more chaos with this move, like as I pass me. And so I'm having the camera start a bit farther away from me. And then as it, right as it's about to pass, like I'm having it get super close. 
And nice. then, then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to accept my camera move as it currently is after this. Just and I'm gonna, accept it. And I'm going to add a parallel light to create to a little more sunlight. This is obviously a preview version, but I've got the environment light happening on me, but I want to actually fake some more sunlight. So I'm going to bring in a parallel light to Clever. blast downward with some sun. And then I'm going to use a uh, no light factory to create a flare uh, in a, general fake position faked position of the sun uh intentionally making sure that it that that flare that my body crosses the flare so that i can use it as an obscuration oh, layer it helps sell great it. idea now on my rock i'm just quickly going to its settings where on its uh i'm going to turn down its reflection reflectivity to nothing because i really don't need it to do that i'm going to turn down its glossiness and i neither of those may matter because i'm actually going to go down and check this box called matte shadow matte shadow and so that is just uh, that's made it invisible in here but that means that isn't it kind of cool you can kind of see it obscuring the little grid lines in there so that's made it this invisible object here and when i say okay you'll see that the matte shadow mode is just cutting out little bits of the bottom of this. If I scroll forward, you'll be able to see more of what's going on, but there are actually 3D shapes now connected to this second null that are that can interact with the base of this object and create kind of a cool warbly interaction on the bottom. And so if I scale that kind of down to the shape and size of these rocks or so, and just move it up and down until it's doing something like this, now, there's a cool wobbly thing going on here where the 3D model disappears uh, in this kind of organic shape. I'm going to scale it up a little bit more, scale it wider a little bit more. So now I get this warbly thing. And uh, I can also do one last thing, which is uh, I'll jump into the scene setup in here again. And that Matt Shadow, private detective, that is beautiful. <laughs> Um, on this, uh, on the actual uh, group with this model, uh, I'm going to create a plane that uh, is a little bit bigger like that. I'm going to throw this matte shadow thing on it, and I'm just going to drag this up to right about here anyway. So that'll cut off everything there, and then all of that extra detail I'll get from my rocks. So we'll do that and do that. And rock and roll, look at that. We've got a kind of cool interaction point that looks a little bit more realistic now. And uh, without adding any lights or anything to this, I could probably go to the ambient occlusion settings and turn them on. And you'll start to, as you play with this, you can add, oh, check that out. You're getting ambient occlusion on all of these rocks. Nice. So I actually want, uh, I don't want them doing it themselves, so I'm going to jump back into here, back to the material properties and uh, down at the bottom of material properties, if they're on screen at all, maybe they're not. Uh, I will say uh, for the now. ambient occlusion mode, I want to receive ray traced ambient occlusion, but I don't want it to cast any. So if I say, OK, now it'll all disappear for a second because I'm not using uh Ray traced uh, ambient occlusion. I've got to switch to that down here. Ray traced. And now, if all goes like I hope, there we go. So now these rock models are receiving some of this ambient occlusion right um, where the interaction with the shadow happens, just like that. But they're not doing it to themselves. So you just get a bit of interaction and not all that craziness. Let me straighten this out a teeny bit. Nope, not that. I want to straighten out this little obelisk or whatever it is. Now, there is a question in the chat about Seth scene. Is there a way you could add turbulence displacement on your model and a mask it to be present only where you have clothes so it looks like the clothes are flapping crazily in the wind as you fall? And the answer is yes. There is a displace uh, modifier or, uh, in Cinema 4D uh, that you can apply to footage and you can mask it uh, a number of different ways, shaders and whatnot. Or you could just isolate the model and make it happen. But you couldn't do it 
very easily inside After Effects. Uh, there is displacement inside Element. Uh, so if Seth had saved his head and shoes and hands separately as uh, separate models, he had two different models, he had the body, the clothes falling and the shoes, head, head and hands falling separately, he could add that displacement inside Element to uh, the clothes and make it happen that way. So yes, the, the answer is yes, basically. Yes, there is a way and you- that is the way. So a way. There's, there's several ways. There is. Yeah, if Seth wanted to, I think if they are separate textures, you could duplicate the group that is your body and, you know, solo the head and glasses and hands. But it's not because it was Mixamo. It's one texture. I think... Wait, was it one texture in the it. end, Seth, or did it end up being multiple? I don't remember what we tried uh, yesterday. We... So we actually... I think that we ended up doing yesterday in cinema, we... I skipped this today, but when we set up this model, took it from Mixamo, brought it into Cinema, we then separated it out into pieces. Um, well, then you might be able to add some displacement, flappy, flappy, flappy. I could. Uh, I don't know if I'll have time on the show today, yeah. but I absolutely you could. Skip it for now, but you totally could, everyone. That's a fun idea. All right. Um, so for my obelisk here, I'm going to add a secondary effect uh, here called... Reflection. Reflection is part of the VFX suite, and I I adore it. So yeah, check great. this out. So basically, if I wanted to just kind of draw where this obelisk might be reflecting and kind of, you know, what direction it is, this is the reflection tool. And it just takes whatever is literally right on that thing, and I get a perfect reflection like that. And the fun part about it is I can then do things like um, if I want to, I can have it blur so I can have some softness to this. And there are a bunch of different types of blurs you could have. Uh, The default is a progressive linear one, so it kind of gets blurrier the farther it gets away from camera. There's this MIP map one, which I like because you get some nice detail up here, but more scattered detail down here. And then on top of all that, there's also a displacement uh, bit right here. And displacement is great because you can say displacement map. I want to use the footage that this is all coming from as a displacement map. I'm going to use its luminance. And now if I turn up the horizontal displacement, for example, look at this. It starts displacing my reflection using I, I I can't geek out over this enough. It is so cool because that's that diffusion or that displacement is coming from the actual mat there. And if I turn up my softness, you get basically a cool illusion of your reflection being scattered so cool. and really reacting to that water, which is great. Now, I don't need all of this reflecting here, so I'm going to have to do some uh, some careful work with this here. But even with you know no keys or anything like that, you can see, look at the detail of this reflection. Isn't that cool? And you can sort of reference what the, how the trees and other things are reflecting uh, in here. It, it turns out they end up pretty dark over here, but they're also, I think, influenced a little bit by the green. This is influenced by this color. And I could always go to, wait, I can tint this, right? (laughs) Or am I remembering something else? Michael, what am I remembering? I thought you could tint your shot, your, uh... Tint your reflection? Yeah. Oh. No, I'm thinking of shadow, VFX shadow. You can tint your shadow. So... For this one, you might need to make reflection only and then just use any color grading effect. That sounds good. Now, because this is a 3D camera move and uh, reflection is designed to be a very quick uh, 2D kind of effect, what I am going to do is I'm just going to add some keyframes to the axis start, end, and slant, and hide. That's basically these controller points where everything is reflecting from. Now, I could... If I were doing a crazy official version of this, I would go to my 3D camera tracker, find two spots on the ground that are on the same plane and create a null at each, and then use the two comp expression to align the shadow to the ground plane the whole time. Or, you know, you could just like add some keyframes here and then scrub forward and probably just 
move these uh, move all these down like that. Just keep them straight. Keep that one straight. And so over time, the reflection is just kind of doing that. See, and like look at how much time you save instead of setting up all these two comps and stuff like that. Too complicated, I say, is what two comp stands for. Oh. <laughs> Actually, I'm just kidding. I would never forsake you two comp expression. Is that I mean? It wouldn't be so bad. You would really only need, you really wouldn't need to really do any tracking because you already have the tracking data, you know, set up for pretty nicely. Exactly. You would just do two comp plus value on each one of those points and then drag it out to where you want it to be based on the, just the one null object you have there for the base of the structure. Exactly. It, you're right. It would it'd be very little work to do. But I'm a busy man. And what time have we got here? We are 124, at, uh, sir. Lovely. If we're gonna get into, if we're gonna get to torch effects, we gotta move through. Wait, what are we trying to get to? Torch effects, I think. Fire. Oh, yes. I love fire. You do love fire. All right, Seth, how are you feeling over there? You know what? I'm gonna do. I can finish off this silliness real quick, and then uh, yeah, I'm pull up just some uh, torchy stuff. It's really gonna be about about adjusting random and like turn obviously turning on motion blur and. Uh, just adjusting like various like random seeds and wiggle stuff to try and get the randomness to look exactly like I want it to. And just also avoid a flat, out, like a f close up shot of my face like this. I mean, motion blur will block that a bit, but you definitely still, that's too much of my digital face for my comfort. Um, See, we just need to fit like, bake it in and then we'll film your face from those exact angles using the <laughs> selfie stick. I, I also want to adjust the camera to where I'm like, I want to fake the sun as realistically as I can, like location wise, this doesn't, I don't buy this location right now, but, but also in a, I'm gonna put it in a place to where it will, where I'll go in front of it. So like, you know, if I move the light, I have it paired to this uh, parallel light. If I move it here behind me, you see it like, I block the sun. And so I want it somewhere where like my body will like pass it a couple times while spinning around to help sell, uh, the whole effect. Mm -hmm. By the way, just to give an example of like, here's a test render I did yesterday of, um, of this I, effect. I hate you for this. Well, it looks a little bit like those, like, uh, uh, digital, like reenactment videos they, they used to do, or maybe still do of like, on the news or like, uh, like basically previs. It looks like previs, but it's still, uh, it's still cool. I think it's great. It looks like, it looks to me like the movie free guy and like in a fun way that you could get away with it being in this. Yeah. Uncanny, you know, realism Valley. That's so cool, man. Well, so I guess real quick, I should, I should just show off super comp just for a second. Um, and try to get that look. Hey, uh, Seth, how did you get all that light interacting uh, across all of those multiple elements you have there? Well, great Gosh, question. Gosh, you got light, light wrap and everything. Light wrap and everything, but it's not overdone, right? You remind me of Superman in this comp. It's a very super... Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> Superman just falling, like this flailing about. Um, so, you all know. Uh, let's grab our elements that we're going to comp. I think I'm just going to comp me and the background. That's really all. I don't, not even going to grab the flare in this. Um, no flare. You need at least X pieces of, fl I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, I, I can't show myself going to get super comp cause I just realized I have a beta installed and it has some things that no one can see. So <laughs> I'm going to real Ooh. quick switch over to us driving. We're just going to go driving for a little bit. Do do Sounds do, good. Do, 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 hiding that screen. Do, do, just hey, Hashi, Hashi, I, I, I should, I, I don't want to miss this. Uh, Jotham wants you to try number 376 in your number 376. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'm, we'll, we'll I'm assuming that. that's Jotham, what it's for. I, I only do this for you. And we're back to Outfix. So, with Super Comp, I am going to uh, just really like, so there's a couple of different things everyone knows we could go and do with super comp is uh, for light wrap. You would think, Oh, I'm going to just go here and I could add light wrap to the foreground layer to the me layer. Uh, but here's what I like doing instead. I like going to the background 
and giving it a little tiny understated, not that, un- optical glow. Like I'm talking Ooh. 1% size 100 and or maybe even size like 50. And do you notice what's happening? It is wrapping around my body. Ooh, it's like a snuggie. Yeah, so I'll turn off this optical glow real quick. Turn it back on. You see it's it's glowing around my edges too and helping envelop me in the light from the background. Now I will go and I'll say highlights only, maybe 50%. So that glow, ah, maybe it's 50%. Because cor- it's, it's like the, it gives the air such like, atmosphere to, exactly. to do that. And so Good. honestly, sometimes that's all I'll go and do. Um, golly, motion blur needs to be turned on with that idiot face of mine. Now, Jotham, you wanted to see 376, right? Um, but I don't know what kind of field you wanted to see that on. Was it the cylindrical field like we have set up right now? Because I can do that. I'll set it I to 376. No, I have no idea how far back 376. Non, non-live Jotham is. But let's see how 376 does. Non-live Jotham oh. is his name? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead on arrival. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, I panned up too far. Oh no. Oh, 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 that's horrible. Oh, that was. <laughs> oh, it just oh. falls off the end like wet toilet paper. Jeez. <laughs> that, that's visceral. I don't know about that. All right. Well, one thing I could do maybe instead of uh, this being a force field that adds to the velocity, what if I had it just. Uh, Set it as a little change direction one, which just will keep them um, kind of pinned right here. Let's see how that looks. Well, oh, not enough. Not enough force again. Okay. Let's put that a little bit lower and let's change it to uh, the cylinder. Let's make it a sphere or a box. Why not? Let's press play. And we've changed the mode of this field to uh, just a little directional change here. So, Vroom. Vroom. Boom. Oh, look at that. You're just rolling with the punches. You can do it. You can do it. You can survive this car. Seth. Oh, Whoa, I did it. Oh, look at that. Boom. Like it weren't nothing. Torrent? <laughs> Oof. Just your legs have just been pulverized. <laughs> so just your bones sliding around in flesh sacks. Uh, Which, uh speaking, family show family yeah. show so by the way i real quick this is, might be a good time to show off one of magic bullet looks uh uh a feature of magic bullet looks that many may not know about that's very useful is the reference library i actually yesterday added these reference images from the uncharted trailer and you can uh uh Ooh. reference them anytime in the reference library up here and uh split screen them and try and match your color as best you possibly can. My new favorite, my favorite, my new favorite tool in looks is the channel mixer, which I often use when trying to match color to another color grade. Really? Do you use channel mixer for that? I love it, man. I just like the way I like the way I think the color fall offs are really nice in channel mixer. And I find that I just, uh, it's kind of like, if you don't know what you're doing, it's nice to sometimes have a new ooh, switch ooh, that channels things that like a new switch that uh, that's that's wired different than your old switch than the old like have a new dial that is just uh, has different uh, processes going on behind right. it that you can dial you can find new looks because by, like you've gotten used to the old dials that your uh, right, <laughs> old right. levers you're pulling at random same, same old habits yeah um, see if I was trying to match colors I would use the color remap. Because then you could say, I want this color to be that color. Yeah, you can. The thing is, I'm also... Okay, a couple things. But you're doing stylizing more than... One might be psychological, is that I'm also... I'm not... I There's something in me that's like, I'm not trying to match something exact. Like, I'm trying to re... I look at it more as, I'm trying to get where they got, how it, like, my own way to get there, if that makes sense, so I can feel like I created it, because... I'm a creator, not a recreator. That's not a term. Is this the same reason why you don't want tennis balls and tracking markers on set? No, that's just to be a show off. Um, and 
And everyone is I've always impressed the way that you want them to be. Everyone always impressed. They walk away saying, that guy. They do. And, such uh, a better process this time around. <laughs> he really had his <laughs> stuff together. Yep. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's just, I forgot where I was going with that. The point is, I could use color. Blah, 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 blah. Let's just do it. Why not? Color remap. Everyone color gets it map. over here, right? Let's Adding a boring old that blue to that Disneyland sculpture blue. to a thing. And oh, all look, it matches cool just stuff. perfectly. It looks like a movie. Great, great. It works like it's supposed to. Boo, <laughs> boo, <laughs> boo. <laughs> Stu is watching and just mortified that I'm ruining his product. Um, boo, whatever. Um. Hashi, what are you doing? I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, know, I, I, I do know that we had talked a little bit about uh, using, uh, doing some uh, torch effects because torches are uh, notoriously dangerous to to have on film sets. Uh, have you had torches in any of uh, your I, filming, Seth? Uh, well, I had um, ground fire, which ground fire was actually this long like tube that the uh, pyro guy effects guy like it it would be strategically placed placed beyond a slope in the dirt so you just see it like you know behind a hill or behind some grass and it was just like a tube or a pipe that like had like fire outlets that gas was gas powered i think or something i don't know and it would it was fully controlled but no i've not um i've not done a live torch uh on set and the problem with the torch is, is that it's a big ball of fire that you have for to trust into the hands of your talent, which, mm-hmm. you know, is, you're not working with. I've never worked with talent before. Sometimes it's a bit. They're dumb. Talent is dumb. Yeah. So yeah. ideally, you just get some red and yellow LEDs that flicker on the end of a stick and you can do some uh, some uh, of this madness that Haji's about to show you. Exactly. A lot of people are just like, oh, I'll just track this fire footage on the end of the stick. No problem. But. Fire doesn't work like that. When the stick is moving around, the fire doesn't just go hur, 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 on top it, of it. Like it, it follows, it flows. So I'm it is uh, a guessing, problem. Yeah. So yes. I'm guessing how she's got some techniques to show you to fix that. Why not? All right. So let me, uh, you know what, Seth, the last thing I want to do at the very end here is uh, we need to add you uh, landing in my, uh, the shot of this ruin is just like whoosh, right there, like either right <laughs> on the obelisk or just like unceremoniously. One hundred percent. That's what we need to do. One hundred percent. All right. So that's coming up for for all you is is the uh, conclusion of this. So then we can cut together a little trailer <laughs> that is you getting knocked out of the plane by the the you know the wrong settings, falling very beautifully, majestically, and realistically. <laughs> 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 and then just landing like somewhat near this uh, us you know presumably where you were trying to get to to discover the treasure all right let's create a new project why not jason murphy in the chat says that they worked on a movie in thailand and they just poured gasoline on 100 feet of hay balls Slightly different safety protocols over there. Hay balls. Hay balls. <laughs> Man, that would be. A there lot are some of fun. jokes I could make about that. I can't think of a single one. So let's just real quick uh, see if our friends at uh, Art Grid have. Uh, let's see what what would you carry around uh, like a torch? Uh, maybe a lighter. Uh, have people walking around with just sticks, unlit sticks in their hand? Walking stick? <laughs> That's it. All right. Walking so yeah, around, walking holding stick. Holding a stick up like they're, like they're searching for something, but not actually on fire. Exactly. And it happens to be a little light source that they, you know. Flare. A flare. See, how's this flare? Okay, let's see. What are these people up to here? Man. <laughs> Arson? Woman. Walking. Field. Arson. <laughs> I uh, by the way I love looking at uh, stock video or stock photo titles, reading them as newspaper headlines, just like very, <laughs> very like mundane, 
uh, insignificant newspaper t- uh, newspaper headlines. Part of cool couple hang out. Young boy looks at dog with longing well, how eyes. Is, how is it part of? Oh, the, the, it's part, <laughs> part of the of collection. Couple. Oh, that, part of okay. a couple. <laughs> like, all right. Let's see. Just just to make sure we're all safe for work here, I'm going to browse on this screen over here. <laughs> Hashi Nick from the chat has apparently brought his wet blanket today and is concerned that nobody cares that Seth is clearly falling over an open ocean and then is suddenly going to fall into a very wooded river. Do you have any idea what the winds are like in these locations? No, very we windy, have to Nick. do that. We have to it's get a very shot windy. me almost it blew about to him the ocean. inshore. It's need... like, a, like the tides, you know? Yeah, so we need, a sh- we need a shot of me almost about to hit the ocean and then like as I get close to it, I'm just swept up into the air and float like to an island about a mile away. Mm-hmm. Like like the feather in Forrest Gump. Actually, I would like to redo. I would like you to fly into Forrest Gump, and have the opening t- the opening titles with me flailing about <laughs> to Alan Silvestri's music, and I land till I land at the feet of Tom Hanks. Actually, I'm I'm joking around, but how much time do we have? Or could we devote? a week of this show at some point to replacing the feather with my flailing body in Forrest Gump. Um, oh, absolutely. we don't have time today, but we should, that should be, we should have a Forrest, we know we should have a Forrest Gump themed episode. Have we not done that yet? We, we were ta- planning. We one. could talk head replacements or at the very, or mouth replacements. If not, you know, not the full head, we could talk about uh, matching archive footage. Oh, with how do we know grain how we do this? and coloring. Like this we, is a we great got idea. Invite, let's, let's invite Alan Melagenian back to the show for that. That would be, be perfect oh yeah that would be great he'd be great that's or that's tom the hanks captain. you know one of the one of the two. Oh, you know uh, speaking of uh, another another famous sully uh, <laughs> it's true <laughs> speaking of uh fame and fortune um i just been told that tom is done with his press junket and is able to actually uh jump back into the show do we want to bring him back in oh, and say hi? thank you tom welcome back welcome back pal how's it going hey, how's it going How's the press Staying awake been? during all this, all the craziness, people asking the same 40 questions. Do they ask you any questions coffee. or are they all, are they all coffee? questions oh. about, uh, good coffee. is it Zen, Zendaya or Zendaya? Oh, Hashi, it's Zendaya. Um, most people think that it's Zendaya, but it's actually Zendaya. And I'm, I'm a trusted source on this being a 37 year old white guy in, uh, I was thinking because you lived in music city and she was originally more of a musical artist than an actress. Oh, you're being very generous with your qualifications. You're, you're subscribing to me. Uh, I'm just a fan. I don't know a whole lot, but you, Tom, you've worked with her. Tell me, tell me what it's like to work with Zendaya. I, th- I think you'll find that Tom's done more than just work with Zendaya. He's hung out with Zendaya. What? I That's know. inappropriate. He is with us right now. He can hear you. What? Tom, tell tell him that you're more than just work colleagues. Wait, is this like, really? Are they dating? I didn't know this. I didn't say they necessarily were dating, but if Tom wants to bring that sort of information onto the show, Tom, you go right ahead. Well, that's fantastic. You're both beautiful, wonderful people who are extremely talented, and I'm a fan. I'm a fan of both of you. I'm a fan of you as one. Tom, unfortunately, we're out of time, so I'm going to have to let you go. Maybe next time we'll let you say words. Goodbye. Michael, welcome back to the show. Uh, yeah, glad always, to be back. It's always Just great. Closing down all this, all this ugly mug and place it with mine start start fresh over here it's always great having tom on the show i will say that he's it is a fun good good guy to come on take the time out of his busy schedule all right well i'm gonna leave the audience with just a once again this test render which looks better than what i just did on the day but i also had a plane anyway uh (laughs) what are we we doing uh torch torch stuff yeah i think so both of you do torch stuff why not? All right. Yeah. Do torch stuff. Four All right. Give so, the dog a torch. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Man's best friend. Cle- <laughs> now. I feel like you're going to make life difficult for yourself with that shot. You're going to light that grass Oof. on fire is what you're going to do. Uh, who says that that's the lit end? Who's oh, that? Oh, <laughs> that poor dog. Fine. 
Fine, this dog is going to ghost rider its, its way out of the water. It's just a cigar is what it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so, all right. So, yes, this is going to make it difficult for me, but I think it's going to be uh, be fun. Let's go ahead and save the project right off top, and we'll save it in our Uncharted After Effects things. Dog fire. Okay. Dog fire! Dog fire! You get caught up in love. More than dog meets the fire. dog. Dog fire! All right, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to see I got two more bars I, of it, Hush. I got two more bars. A dog foot. No, you can go ahead. Sorry. If I run an extract on the on this footage, I just want to see if I can isolate these uh, foreground plants and also the torch. Let's see. Hey, pretty well. Done. Gave him an eye patch, too. Boom. Okay. So, uh... What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of my very favorite of plugins called Horizon the Trap Code Particular. Oh. I okay, you work on a torch using Horizon only, <laughs> and I and I'm going to work on uh, using. What if I did? What if it was the best torch you've ever seen? You you may be able to. I think that you could do it. Horizon get a, get a, torch. That's my an song. Action right. VFX element. You throw it in a small little comp and just like rotate your. <laughs> It would look very good and positive. I'm going to also create a torch, but you're going to do it better because you have all your fire tricks that I always forget the second you teach them to me. I always remember them once I'm doing something and I'm like, why am I doing all this stuff? I could probably just use rough and edges and that would fix everything probably. So I see you're cracking open some particular. I'm ah, going to open. open up some particular as well. Now and there I are torch I've things. on beta. Great. There are torch things in here. Right, we've got a torch thing. It's a. Uh... You just got torches right in there already. No, I mean oh, like there there's you go. a, there's a right? hairy fire. What's it called? Torch smoke. Mirror, burr, Michael, what's it called? I don't know. I yes, don't, you I've... do. Don't you dare act like you don't know in your sleep what the names of all of these presets. You know, I honestly I don't go into the presets very often at, oh. at all. Oh, that's that's just my problem. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Cool, because usually I'm after something very specific, and uh, I'm just so and I like to, s- similar to you, and you're not wanting tracking markers. Much like I'm just going to do this the hard way. Mm, yeah, you know, you, while you're doing that, why okay, don't I? So hazy fire is one preset. It's a little bit too too wild for me. Let's see, uh, rocket boot, a simple fire, very simple. You know what? Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to use a preset either. Well, I'm also going to show everybody. Our friends in Action VFX have uh, they have some torches down here as well. They sure do. And uh, maybe we can put these things together because I feel like you can combine particular with these torch effects. Oh, one hundred percent, yes. Because the, that's the best way to do it. Yes. Because you want to, torches to have that little like embery thing going on. And, mm-hmm. and you might want to art direct them a little more, so you could add those into, on top of with, the stock footage fire. We're not looking for big gas fires. Big gas no. fires. Big ass fires. I am going to, in the meantime, add. I'm flame. going to add a null object. There like you go, flame this. torch. I'm going to make it a 3D you remember object. Remember my nickname, Michael. Thanks. And then I'm going to add a little uh, light here. Uh, just a little Heck. point light, and we'll make it kind of fiery colored. Why not? It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to attach this point light to this null and uh, zero its position out a little bit. So, And the reason I do that is because I don't like animating lights. I don't like the way you've got to go like grab their gizmos and move them around. I like being you able have to, to be have, a cinematographer. Like, it's very like annoying. a thing. Like you can grab the, the yeah. handle and move it around. So I'm going to do one of my favorite tricks for 3D tracking, which is just a really, really loose version, which is uh, I'll create a camera here. I'm going to pretend that this first position, which is way back here, is uh, in the background there. I'm going to turn the camera's orientation so it looks a little bit like that square is sort of in perspective, right? I'll add a keyframe here. Um, for its Z properties, and then we'll get all the way forward to around here by just dragging this 
closer and closer to camera, closer and closer to camera. So it sort of grows proportionately the way this torch does like that. And now this tracking obviously very isn't, isn't great, but what I can do is in particular, I'll switch its emitter type to lights. Uh, I'll do that. And then I'll remember after the fact to rename this light emitter one. Why not? And uh, now when I play through, uh, I'll scrunch it over here in this half screen setup. Let me find my preview buttons again. All right. So now when I play this back, what I should have is, uh, oh, first of all, I forgot that it's going to assume the emitter size is 500, and I don't want it to be that big. I want it to be, uh, let's try like 20 big. Now we've got uh, what I want, which is uh, turn down this. Uh, this is a poor shot for this because the uh, um, background is so bright. So it's going to be hard to add a torch to it. Ugh. Oh, well, I really, I really still want to. So uh, if I turn off my like extracted layer, you can sort of see now I have this little emitter that is way back there, and now it sort of is moving forward through space somewhat with the dog. So like you can kind of you get some perspective shift there, right? And yes. uh, now we'll do some just boring manual tracking. Since the the overwhelming majority of this is already moving on Z, I'm just going to go do my favorite thing. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is exciting. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, you could do this. You could track um, that thing with Spot in, Clone. It would be just fine. And just change the scale of the particles and stuff. I'm really, I really am committing to the 3D. No, I would too. Uh, 3D space here, which is probably foolish no it's not now, the other way you could do this is you could um motion track this in 2d space and then parent that 2d tracking to a 3d plane that is set um right oriented with a camera and fit to the gate and then push it back over time to match the z but scale it up appropriately and then use the two world why I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good idea. So person speaking of ideas, Jason diamond, who is marketing themselves as the upgrade to, from Jason Murphy suggests you should make the dog shot day for night. So you have a much better offset for the torch, which I think might be doable depending on if you've got the raw That's footage, true. it's not too blown out. Well, let's and see. Nick says that Seth is cheating because this technique of mixing practical and digital effects is basically what you did on darker colors. Ah, it's cheating if I do what I already did. What? It's don't cheating bring up his previous I, material. Yeah, definitely that. Don't, especially that previous material. Uh, go watch Darker Colors That's if you have it. Sequel to Darker Colors. Chances his are previous you material. Previous material. Lighter, lighter fare. All right. His dark. I'm, his I'm, darker colors. Mm -hmm. I'm yes. going to download the log version of that in the background, so I'll have some more options in a little bit to do some day for night stuff. Okay. In the meantime, this is my quick and dirty 3d track of this torch dirty i'm 3D. pretty proud of it actually Should it's be. moving through 3d space we do that in a relatively short amount of time but also i'm, I'm kind of unaware of what time it actually is it's so. 152 you have eight minutes to put fire eight on that minutes. dog stick, I, stick. I on like that, that dog stick dogs okay. stick dog stick all right, so let's go to the emission extras and, uh, oh, not emission extras, global controls and do uh, some pre-run on this particle system. A few seconds worth. Uh, let's do some flame style physics. Now, fluid works really well for this stuff, but I don't got time. I'm just going to do old school. Uh, the life of these particles is going to be uh, I'll say 0.3 seconds or something like that. Uh, I'm going to do a lot more of them per second. So let's say like three or 400 particles per second. And let's go ahead to the environment. And we'll say wind is negative, I don't know, 
<laughs> be pretty fast. Let's say negative a thousand to begin with. And now let me just see what this looks like. I like trying to preview all of my uh, stuff in like the lowest quality possible, just like these <laughs> little dots like that. No, it's it's a really good tip because it gives you an idea of emotion without being distracted by the rest the rest of the stuff that can distract you. Like it, now, it lets you focus on just the getting the motion right. If only we had a view setting in particular that could sh- give you a preview of your motion uh, and not fully render it. Hey, I don't want to scroll down that low in the interface. It's down here, guys. Full render, motion preview. Blah, blah. Now it's just dots. Now it's just dots. Well, mine doesn't have any motion, but you would see dots. Yeah, I deprived everyone of my of my theme song for uh, the physics and cinema oh, for the earlier. Bad. But uh, maybe maybe they'll come back. We'll we'll do an all an all song episode of. Uh, VFX and chill. <laughs> All, uh, you know, like oh, every uh, my sitcom gosh. in a the musical uh, episode. Yes. Early 2010s, right? I'm in. Right. I don't know why I'm worrying about this tracking. Because you care. Because I care. You know what? Let's quickly change our rendering mode to GPU, and let's hope I'm not using up too many resources anyway. So uh, now if I play this back, I'll get this nice dog running forward. And what's great about this is the particles are staying where they're supposed to in 3D space and kind of drifting up like that. And so I'm starting to get the gist of what like a torch might do. See how like when you throw it up and down. It's got all that kind of secondary motion to it. I'm going to make the life of these particles a teeny bit longer. And let's try 0.5. And their size over life is going to go down. And that's how they're going to disappear instead of just hard cutting out. And the reason I'm not using opacity is because flame doesn't do that. It doesn't get (laughs) like, like less like opaque and then disappear it just kind of is or is not in a way correct so let's try this another another pro tip don't make it do what it doesn't do don't make it do what it but so many people do so many people make things do what they don't do just because they're like well it fades out it it doesn't seth why are you exporting the fire after you put it in someone is asking don't worry about it uh i wanted I was having issues getting the fire to show up in my in the uh, preview or whatever, and so I was using it as a sprite, and so I was mm-hmm. bringing, I was basically exporting it as a sprite and bringing it in as a sprite that can now live in my particular designer window. That's why. That's why I did what I did. And See, I, I by thought, the way, I just thought you wanted the positive affirmation of the render done sound. Yeah. That too. Mm. And by the way, I'm not doing any, anything like I'm actually doing something different than I normally do just because I want to try some things. But if anyone is wondering why I'm doing things wrong. Let me see if I have our, if I have downloaded my dog on a log in log yet. Nice fire flying around there. Seth. <laughs> it's weird, right? Like it's, like a, it's a weird trailer see, thing. Beautiful. I feel like that would be perfect for, say, a Back to the Future. Oh, oh yeah, yeah that could. So, oh, what I'm going to oh. do is I'm going to betray everyone by uh, like from a I speed. could I could mess with Boom. particular. I I could mess with it, but I'm also just instead I'm just going <laughs> to go uh, um, add some rough and edges to it, and not just any rough and edges, but the spiky rough and edges. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because now I can uh, turn up said spiky rough and edges. And I'll turn up the scale of said spiky rough and edges. And yeah, I'm going to get this kind nice. of a shape. I'm going to set a keyframe for the scale here and a keyframe for the scale way back here to be much smaller. And also for the border to be smaller. Oops, did I just move my... Oh, the the log footage is larger. There we go. That's why. All right. 
What was I doing? I added some rough and edges and I've got a keyframe, the border width and the uh, scale of them. So they sort of are doing what I'm hoping, which is taking these dotted particles that are very computationally easy to render and adding a bit of a uh, little detail to them. And now that I have that, as I play through, there's going to be some motion up coming from my particles that look kind of flame shaped. Which that is, is such neat. a good trick, Hashi. Such a good trick. And now all we got to do is add a little offset to the turbulence here. Uh, let's uh, do this real quick. Uh, let's write uh, not turbulence much of up. X. Let's do um, minus time times like 200. So it'll drift 200 in X over to that one side. And then let's do minus time times like 800 in Y. And what that'll do is it'll move the uh, the fractal under this uh, rough and edges. And so let me just play this back. And now that looks great. at about the same speed of that, we've got this shape. And now it doesn't look like flame, you may say. And it doesn't look like I flame. Agree. It it doesn't it doesn't look like a real flame. It looks it looks silly. It's goofy. But since we have our amazing friends at Action VFX, Seth, did you download a torch into our thing? Oh no, it's in my downloads folder. I'm sorry, but I can drop it there. Wait, renders. Quick. Wait. I have a sprite. A There's a sprite in there. That's the that I your sprite. Yeah. Okay. So you exported the sprite. I'm just going to grab that since it's by that's the way low weight. The little cra thing that I did where I made the torch as a sprite and setting it to. Uh, a, uh, the velocity to from emitter motion, you immediately have back to the future, like fire trails. It's that is very insanity. Cool. Uh, now I'm excited by this. Sorry. Keep going with your awesome torch. Uh, so now I'm going to do what I would have, would never tell anybody to do, which is we better parent, hurry, we have 45 seconds left, 45 seconds. And then everyone oh. stops watching. They do we lose you forever. All right. So here's what an amateur might do. They would take this uh, 3D, they would take a cool asset from Action VFX and parent it to this thing. But the problem is exactly what Michael was saying. Like, this isn't what Fire does. That's not how it works. And so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to scale this up so it's too big for its britches here. And then I'm going to use my particular layer. I'm going to put it right above it. And now I'm going to say, uh, use that as an alpha mat, dude. dude. And now that shape that we just created with rough and edges and everything is now a reveal mat for this moving piece of footage of fire. So what should happen is this fire element is real photographic fire, but it is only being rendered where the physics of the particular particles would have allowed it to exist. So it is roughly the right scale, but the physics are influenced by that particle system. Such and a good so trick, it's, Ashi. it's a that cool is way such a good to, trick. yeah, like repurpose a uh, stock element like this. Now, not perfect, but you get the idea. And I'm sure that I have other exciting uh, fires around that would work just as good for that. But I know that we should probably wrap things up. Man. How are you feeling, Seth? Are you going to get anywhere over there? I don't know. He's just I've, going back to the future. I've got a fun thing. I've got a fun little trick that I've never done before by making this torch with emit emitter speed, having this thing like, I don't know. I'm trying to see what I can make with it. Anyway, I, uh, Seth, this, this, by this, the way, could a, this could be a future tutorial. Well, it'll be on the show at some point, but. Join us at some point when we do a uh, Forrest Gump one week and make my flailing body replace the feather. My flailing body is also the name of my autobiography that you can pick up at Amazon right now. Actually, don't search that. I haven't searched it yet. But yeah, don't I go do to Amazon. Go to copyright. go to a, a, a local local bookstore. Local, local bookstore, bookstore buddy. And buy my flailing body, the Seth Worley story, uh, by Daniel Hashimoto. Inexplicably, he wrote it. Thank yes. all of you for joining us on the show. Uh, what do we say at the end of our show? Um, at the end of our show, we say VFX are awesome and you should do them after learning them from us. No, Seth, That's exactly I, what we say. 
this this setup was amazing. You did some tremendous work, and you did I too. Hate, this I was a hate fun your one. good cinematic eye and what cool shots you can create with very few layers. I hate your genius brain and the amazing crap you can create. And that's what Seth and Hashi hate about each other. If tell us what you hate about us in the comments below, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> all, Mike, Mike, so. Michael will at our at our three hundred and sixty reviews internally at the company. Like he he's got an outlet yeah. for that. Yeah, he does. and um, but thank you, Michael, for bringing your expertise and your uh, motorcycle, your your mobile home, uh, <laughs> as it were, uh, on the road on the motorcycle. Uh, everybody, it's been fun. Please join Ooh. us next week for. Uh, I have we decided yet if we're gonna do the, what is it called the, Project Adam, the Adam. Oh, oh, oh yeah, why not next week? We Let's just do, say we it now. We should do Adam Project next week. Uh, the Adam Project trailer. or Project Adam the trailer. It's out there. It's really cool, and there's a lot of effects in it that we've literally done on this show. So we thought we might just redo them in the context of, the Adam project project adam guys thank you adam so much ruins everything adam ruins everything thank you so much for joining us please please have a really safe and good week and Ooh. we will see you next week on vfx Look, no hands no hands quick left turn here we go whoa